oceans, vast, mysterious, and full of life. Fascinating habitats can be found in and around the water, like mangrove forests, trees that grow in salt water. Leaves and fruit nourish tiny organisms. Here, a food chain begins that extends across the entire sea. The labyrinth offers protection for fish that spend their childhood here and for everything near the coast because the forests stop tsunamis and floods in their tracks. Coral reefs, diverse and densely populated, topped only by the rainforests. The creatures here are highly specialized, ingeniously adapted to one another. Take corals, for example. Polyps and algae live together in a community. They both keep each other fed. The polyp builds the house, and the algae keep things colorful. Reefs only grow a few inches per year, so it's quite amazing how enormous some of them are. Acting as breakwaters, they help to protect the coast. The oceans are vast. Nomads wander the blue depths. A sea turtle might eat her fill near Mexico, but to lay her eggs, she sets off for the beach where she herself hatched. Thousands of miles she swims, all the way across the Pacific towards her destination, the coast of Japan. But not all nomads travel alone. The oceans do more than meets the eye. Every second breath of air we take, we owe to the sea. For more than half of all oxygen is produced by plankton. The oceans store and transport heat, guiding the weather and the climate. They also absorb greenhouse gases, 50 times more than the atmosphere. The oceans are deep close to six miles at their deepest. No ray of sun comes this far. Below 3,000 feet, there is total darkness. It is cold. The pressure is immense. Without a submarine, no human could survive. And yet, this extreme environment is home to creatures as if from another planet. Some are even equipped with a flashlight. The female frogfish carries a lantern with glowing bacteria living inside. That way, she lures her prey straight into her mouth. On the sea floor, stone vents spurting black water, toxic and hot, over 660 degrees Fahrenheit. But even here, life is flourishing. Bacteria feed on the toxins and are then eaten by other animals. It's a fine-tuned ecosystem formed over millions of years, only recently discovered by humans. More than two-thirds of the Earth are covered by oceans, but we know less about them than about the dark side of the moon. What mysteries still lurk in their depths? What unknown life forms? We don't have much time left to find out. The oceans are in danger. Natural resources inspire greed. Our demand for metal and energy is insatiable. Since oil and natural gas supplies are decreasing on land, drilling is taken farther and farther offshore down to even greater depths. The oceans are drowning in garbage. Eight million metric tons wind up at sea each year. If a creature confuses plastic for food, it dies. Plastic doesn't decompose. It only breaks apart slowly into smaller and smaller fragments 
releasing toxins as it goes. Tiny pieces, called microplastic, are everywhere. They pass through the food chain, all the way up to our plates. Experts say that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. We catch fish faster than nature can resupply. Fish populations have already dropped by 90%. But not all of them wind up on our plates. For every pound of shrimp, up to nine pounds of other marine life are hauled up with the catch and then discarded. Bottom trawling and dynamite fishing demolish habitats, and our appetites and ignorance destroy even more. One in four people relies on food from the ocean, especially in poorer regions. But now, this basic food source is becoming scarce. And not all threats are visible. Rivers wash fertilizer from fields into the sea, lowering the amount of oxygen in the water. Marine life chokes to death. Estuaries turn into dead zones, doubling their number every 10 years. Untreated sewage and chemicals flow out of factories, ships, and towns into the sea, altering the natural development of life there. Carbon dioxide levels are rising. The oceans need to absorb more and more of it, turning acidic as a result, a major problem for mussels and coral, whose calcium shells dissolve. Due to climate change, ocean temperatures are rising. But if the water is too warm, the coral polyp expels the algae living in its tissue, leaving the coral white. For a while, it can survive like that. But if the situation lasts too long, it will die as well. Mangrove forests are disappearing, but without their protection, food and young fish disappear too. Storms and waves crash unimpeded on the shores. We need to better understand the oceans and treat them more sustainably. Good practice can already be found around the globe. Our lives are tied to the ocean. If it's sick, we cannot stay healthy. <laughs>